Hello everyone and welcome back to an episode of Nobunaga's Ambition, the Oda Clan. So, um, wow, uh, there have been actually quite a few of you who've been watching this and commenting on my videos and wow, keep it coming. That's, uh, it's kind of like surprising. Uh, anyways, uh, it's, it's humbling. Uh, so thank you to everybody who has uh, watched and commented and liked and uh, subscribed. That's just amazing to me. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, but some of the people that have been leaving me some comments have been giving some helpful uh, tips and hints about some things. And one of the uh, one of the <laughs> one of the tips that uh, somebody gave me was basically that. Um, Basically, these people that I've been scouting have two more fortresses to the east somewhere. The, uh, these guys right here. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did not even see them there. Oh, man, they are like, uh, they're set up really well just to, like, swarm in and beat up on us, aren't they? Like, we're right here in the middle. Like, if I was playing these guys, I would absolutely want to just swarm in and take this whole middle part right here. Interesting. Uh, so I'm glad that that was called to my attention. Not that I was planning on going in that direction anyways, but we did scout them out and I had, uh, well, you know, I had thought maybe, but uh, whew, man, that would have been a colossal mistake uh, if I hadn't have caught it. Uh, and another uh, tip that was brought to my attention by the same person was uh, basically they said to on uh, Nagashima here basically since they're by themselves and I don't know that they have any yeah they don't have any alliances or anything um, just to swoop in and basically beat up on them and take them over um, so and that was something that I think we had briefly thought about was um, basically just coming over there and rolling over them. So, you know, in this... I'd been fretting a lot about resources, you know, gold and food. And something that I had thought and then was, well, you know, was confirmed in, uh, in a comment was basically that you can... Uh, all the resources are out there that you just have to basically take them. <laughs> so, uh, very, very true. Very true. So, uh, that will be something I think that's going to be on our radar for sure. Because we know that with our quest, which is to uh, take these guys here, we know that with our quest we're going to want to have as, as many men as possible. So, and that should also give me a little bit of experience with battle leading up to the more important battle so all right um i think i'm i've been kind of in the habit of stopping my videos at the end of a turn rather than at the beginning of a turn so and that seems to be true because i only have one labor left so i have to tell you guys um you know i've with nobunaga's ambition i've been recording like basically two videos at a time and then uh, posting them one a day, and then, um, yeah, it's the past two days, it's been really, I, I've been wanting to play, I've just been thinking about it, thinking about this game, so it's really kind of piqued my curiosity, I, I've enjoyed it quite a bit, I've even thought about uh, starting like a playthrough of another clan, just on my own free time, but uh, I've been kind of against that, just because I've, I'm wanting this uh, this let's play to be more of just like a blind let's play where things just happen organically and uh, I'm not bringing in any sort of my own uh, my own outside knowledge now don't let that dissuade you from commenting and giving tips I'm all fine about that I have no problem with you know what some people would consider backseating that's fine um, but I thought it would be more entertaining for you guys to, <laughs> to experience firsthand uh, my tragedies. <laughs> So, all right, so let's see what's up with this month's council. Holy guacamole. Um, wow, what did this come from? This trade, what did this come from? I don't remember setting anything in motion to get a large amount of money like this. Was was this where we, this, ah, this is where we sold the, uh, the supplies. Okay, 
that makes sense. So that's why we ended up uh, doing so well on income. Of course, we invested a little bit in our infrastructure. Uh, we did some investigation where basically we scouted out another territory. Uh, Nobuhita says, I ran into Fountain and other resources around Nagoya. Looks like my training's paid off. Not enough to conquer this war-torn world, though. So uh, we had him, uh, we had him like searching, and I guess he f he ran into a fountain. So that's cool. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Says Modenari Mori took post of munitions director Nobuhita Oda finished the survey. Three resources found. Great. Uh, the intellect went up to eighty-nine. Uh, Hidesada Hayashi's uh, political ability went up to sixty. Good. And, uh, yeah, gained experience, sure, sure, sure. Things that happen every month, basically. Okay, so, hmm, I don't really know how those resources are going to affect us. Does that affect our um, adding facilities? Is that what that affects? Okay, so uh, if we look here in the agricultural district, it says uh, resources fountain. So that's kind of cool. But I, it doesn't look like we can click on that. Uh, cannot be built due to a lack of development. Okay, so it's not developed enough yet. Okay, so we have uh, a blacksmith and canals. All right, so I know that in the tutorial it kind of talked about this, but um, it wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't really super clearly explained as to uh, what. I'm just imagining that these will become... Uh, available for work once these, uh, I guess you'd call them, yeah, these districts uh, become a little bit more developed, I guess. I mean, <laughs> that sounds kind of silly because it says right there, due to lack of development, but maybe as more people come into Nagoya, as the other districts kind of blossom too, they kind of uh, cascade effect. I, I don't know. So, But it's interesting that we found that fountain. That's kind of cool. Okay, so we did, I think, scout down here, and we found uh, they have 2874 here, 1,000 here. That's very interesting that they only have 1,000 uh, closest to us. Hmm, strange. And then uh, here they have 1,000. So grand total, it looks like uh, about 5,000 troops. So we've definitely got them outmanned, especially considering... Um, our clan support that we have as well, and we're robbing their clan support. That's part of our our uh, masterful deceit plan, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, uh, so uh, as per usual, we're going to develop. So uh, uh, something that also was brought to my attention, basically, was to focus on building up crops and conscripts first. Uh, you know. Uh, basically in sort of a, a might makes right type of approach uh, leading into you know basically you conquer around you and that gives you that early boost of resources that you need to grow even more which I completely understand you know it makes a lot of sense coming from playing games like you know Crusader Kings 2 where it's very very important uh, that you need you need to stomp out people early that are around you before other people basically do the same thing so and you do that by getting more troops so let's uh, let's do some development so it looks like um, you know we have a lot of room here for conscripts so let's just go ahead and invest in conscripts now here we don't have so much room but I think we're just gonna do a round of conscripts everywhere Woo! look at that okay and that'll take six of our labor. And then we have five labor remaining. So, hmm, maybe let's... Hmm, <laughs> I want to scout out these guys. You know, I want to scout them out just to see exactly what they've got before we do anything crazy. So let's send... Uh, let's send Sarakatsu Murai. Uh, up in up in there and see what he can find out cool and we still are going to that didn't cost any labor so we still have some labor I think it's a good idea uh, to how about changing a facility hmm. 
Uh, we could upgrade base structures. We could fortify a post. We could use three labor to improve the roads. What about this fortify a post business? So we've already fortified that. If we know we're going to be coming over here, is there really... I mean... I confess, I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit uh, hazy on exactly what these uh, what these little forts are going to do. Is that where you can kind of like base your men out of? Like, say if we rolled into Nagashima and it went kind of poorly, could we withdraw back to like here to try to reinforce? And that would be kind of like a pseudo castle. You know, I'm not really too sure. Alternatively, we could go down the road route, which I like the idea of having a strong infrastructure. I definitely do. Uh, especially, it would be good to have a strong infrastructure in between our cities. Or villages, I guess you'd call them. Uh, so that we can get back and forth quickly. So maybe we should um, try to... It looks like we're pretty good between Nagoya and Narumi. Like we're on this uh, pretty nice, looks like a highway almost. But here from Shibata to Nagoya, it's kind of weak. So why don't we, uh, why don't we bump up both of those? Since we can do more than one at the same time. I guess we could technically bump them both up to a four. I don't want to go up that high. I don't know. I think I'm just going to do both a one. Just up one. And that could be a waste. But I'm not trying to blow through all of the gold that we just stored up. So, And then um, I think I will take charge of this myself. Yes. Okay, and I think my plan is once this scouting comes back on the Nagashima clan, what we will do is we will head that direction. And I'm, I'm a, to be honest with you guys, I'm a little nervous because in the tutorial battle, I did very poorly, in my opinion. So I'm going to have to remember to pause the game. Pause, 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 pause. As long as that's possible. Okay, but it'll be a learning experience for sure. You guys might see me crash and burn, which I'm sure would be very entertaining for a, for a Let's Play video. All right, uh, I think that's going to be uh, about it for this turn. So, boom. Heading on through. Uh, Muira clan was eliminated by the Am Amago clan on April 1535. So, the uh, Amago stomped out them. Uh, Namioka clan was eliminated by the Nanbu clan. Okay. Uh, Uida Nagao clan was eliminated by Nagao clan. Interesting. So like a subsect or something. So I wonder if these are like some of the bigger clans that are doing exactly what we're thinking about doing. Stomping out those little clans. Or assimilating them I guess you'd call it. So this month's council we brought in 817 income. Uh, we spent out 1400. So we didn't just absolutely hemorrhage a ton, but it's fine. Reporting in. Uh, so one or more enemy castles have been scouted. My training has paid off. Very good. Yes, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Hiccups. Okay, so Ta Taru Mizu Castle yielded to Shimazu Clan. Koso, Koso? Yeah, Koso Castle yielded to Cho Chosokabe Kabe Clan. Um... Okay, we gained some political skill. That's good. Wow, a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened. Uh, people added a workshop at Shobata Castle. That sounds good. Uh, okay, yeah. Adjacent bases grew due to road improvement. That's good. That's what we want to. That's that's the goal. That's what we want to see. So we know they have thirteen hundred soldiers, and we have a lot more than that. Um, So I'm just thinking now about getting the soldiers there. So there's the Tsushima tribe. They're still they're still pretty uh, pretty up with us here. They're fortifying that. Can we use that since we're we're cool with them? Or I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, uh, regardless, let's go ahead and develop again. 
So we're up to almost, uh, what, 8,000 troops, which sounds uh, pretty good. We'll just do it again. Doing it again. Gonna build up. We're gonna have lots of troops. We are getting ready for war. Okay, we have two labor left. That's probably because uh, we're still working on the roads. Hmm. So that means we could we couldn't do any of this. Like we couldn't fortify a post or anything like that. Uh, I don't think any scouting is necessary at this point. I mean, I I I guess I would kind of like to scout over here to see what these guys have going on, but I don't think it's just imperative. And it does cost money. So now the real question is, do we just want to um, just want to do them guys in? What would you like? Do we just want to do them in? Can't buy guns. I guess we can only buy guns from like a special trader, but they only have thirteen hundred troops. Um, I'm not really sure what the difference between blockade and storm is. I wonder if we could refer to. Uh, Where's the help? Help. War. Blockade. Where's blockade? Do, 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 do. Battle. Battle refers to the part of the game. Yeah, okay. They're like, let us let's just define battle for you. <laughs> Even when facing a powerful foe with a larger army, it is possible to turn the tables in battle mode. Sure. Your objective in battle mode is to command your units and eliminate all enemy units. Time passes during battle, but you cannot execute other commands while you're leading your forces in combat. If you want to end your battle, you can press the button on the top right of the screen to suspend it. There are some situations where battles are automatically suspended too. A suspended battle can be re-entered and it will begin again where you left off. You can freely move units in battle by selecting them and clicking on their destinations. When units are near or in direct contact with enemy units, they will automatically fight. Pressing the portrait icon over a unit will open the tactic menu. You can activate tactics by clicking on them. Officer traits may also activate automatically. Some commands will consume your control gauge when they are used. The control gauge is under the soldier numbers gauge and increases with time. I wish this was a little bigger. Like, so I could I could see a little bit better. Okay, so that didn't really tell me what I'm looking for. Maybe this is it. Capturing bases. A unit will automatically surround an enemy base once in front of it. Okay, we did see that. A morale gauge will be displayed above the surrounded base and will gradually decrease. When the morale gauge becomes empty, the base is captured. The speed at which the morale gauge falls depends on the surrounding unit's int, the base castle's lord's leadership, the hit points of the base, the troops in the surrounding units in the base itself. However, when the surrounding units do not have more troops than the base has hit points, the morale gauge will not fall. Okay, so, you know, very similar to Crusader Kings. The follower... Following commands are usable while blockading. Aha! Number one, storm. Storm. Relentlessly attack the base, damaging its hit points, hit point, and troops. The base is captured when the troop count falls to zero. Because your units receive counterattack damage when storming, take care not to be routed for lack of troops. Ah, so this is very. That's very very similar uh, to assaulting in CK2. Raise. Burn the town and regain supplies. This lowers the development and popularity of the base, bringing on revolts. Though there is no risk of counterattack, you will need to redevelop the base when captured. That sounds like a shit plan to me. Sometimes surrounded bases will voluntarily surrender. That'd be great. <laughs> this is determined by the castle lord's abilities and loyalty, the size of the enemy army, and the expectation of allied reinforcements. A base that has surrendered falls to the enemy, and the officers within it become captives. Try actively reinforcing bases under attack to prevent premature surrenders. Hmm. Okay, so that was uh, helpful regarding the storm command. Blockade, I guess, is just when we surround them. Provisions. Units bring about 120 days worth of provisions with them. When they march, once the supplies run out, troop count gradually decreases until the unit retreats at zero. Provisions automatically refill when you pass an allied or friendly base. When you do, the refilling province uses up supplies depending on how much the unit was lacking. Hmm. Sometimes due to the effects of certain traits, units fall into unorderable or disabled states. So kind of like broken. In, uh, in EU4, unorderable unit cannot receive orders and acts on its own, caused by enemy traits such as Scheme Master. 
Disabled unit cannot receive orders and cannot attack or act. Caused by enemy traits, says it's Hawkeye. So actually, that's not at all like uh, EU4. It just is a result of you know special traits that uh, you you know the enemy has. Uh, weather. Hmm. The weather sometimes changes during battle. Weather has flowing effects. Sunny, basic weather, no real effect. Cloudy, a gateway to worsening weather. Rain, release and charge become unusable. Hmm. Snow, charge becomes unusable. Fog, ranged attack damage is halved. I like this. I like that weather has an effect. That's cool. That's cool. Mass battle. Mass battle is a special type of battle that you can only begin when a large number of units are gathered in an area. When chosen, it starts a battle involving all the units in an area. If the conditions are met, the button won't be shown next to the battle button. Some rules of mass battle differ from normal battles. Number one, if the main leader's unit retreats, that side loses, even if they have units remaining. Regardless of what positions they are in on the main screen when the battle begins, both armies start facing each other. Hmm. The loser of the battle has all of their involved units destroyed, giving this command the potential to greatly change the tide of conflict. Hmm. So if you have a mass battle and you can manage to uh, surround or isolate the main leader's unit and cause them to retreat, you could, I mean, you could absolutely overwhelm somebody easily. Hmm. Cool. Maybe this is kind of what I was thinking about with the post. Battles at post. When you start a battle on posts that have been fortified, there will be turrets and horse stockades on the battle map. The owner of the outpost can use these facilities to chip away at the enemy forces and buy time. So it's more of a defensive thing. The amount of facilities increases based on the post level of the post. You can destroy enemy facilities by bringing your units in contact with them. When the battle ends, however, the destroyed facilities will be restored. Night attacks. Battles at bases. Battling on a base sends your force into a castle siege. The castle map will have a number of turrets and horse stockades based on the base's hit points. I really don't know what a horse stockade is. Just going to put that out there. The victory conditions are the same as a normal battle. You can also directly attack the castle gates to deal direct damage to the enemy base. So that's storming, right? In addition, victory in a castle siege allows you to deal bonus damage to the base. Hmm. Each base has multiple gates, and attacking either of them will reduce the base's hit points. However, even if a base reaches zero hit points after the siege, it will not be captured. To capture the base, you'll need to surround it after the battle and lower its morale. Hmm. Night attacks. A battle you've begun may... I'm sorry about this, guys. I'm sorry if this is really damn boring to you. <laughs> but, like, it's interesting to me, and I think I need to know this stuff, so... It just caught my eye, and I'm, I'm just reading through it just to make sure that I'm as well prepared as I can get. So, apologies. Hopefully, you, like me, are, you know, interested in this and want to learn as well. So, I'm, if you've watched the video this far, you're probably fine with this. So, uh, a battle you've begun may turn into a night attack based on the battling officer's intellect. The side receiving the night attack starts battle discovered. By the enemy and temporarily confused. Huh. Uh, this confusion will lift after time passes. Since night attacks occur more frequently depending on how large the difference of int is between the battling officers, having officers with high int in battle can put you in the advantage. Well, sure. Uh, well, I guess we might as well read them all, huh? Controlling units. Select a unit will open up unit commands. Selecting an objective while a unit is selected will have it march toward it. Okay. If you hold the shift key and select relay points, then select an objective, the unit will march through the relay points to its objective. To deselect a unit, click on something other than the objective or right click. Also, if there are multiple units in a single point, you can select them all by holding shift and clicking. Okay, very good. Units also have the following commands. Home. Selecting this causes the unit to automatically march back to the base it came from. Is, is this home? Does that mean like home, go back, go home? Is that what that little arrow means? Go home. Okay. But there's three of them. Two, enter. The officer will enter a base and the unit will disband. I, this looks like rays. This looks like a, a cannon, I guess. So siege and... Gosh, you got me. I don't know. When your unit is fighting an enemy unit, you can enter into battle mode. Number one battle. 
Selecting this command allows you to intervene in your unit's battle. Mass battle. When there are many enemy and allied units near the area, selecting this will cause a large battle involving all of those units. When the unit is surrounding an enemy base, they can storm or raise it, which we've read about. Uh, storm relentlessly storms the base, deals hit point damage, raise, lowers enemy base's popularity and development, restores supplies. Unit movement and posts. When units move, they move towards objectives. Posts, units, or bases you set. Units move along roads on their way to their objective and automatically enter combat with enemy units they encounter along the way. Allied or friendly units cannot overtake each other on the road. However, up to three units can occupy a post at the same time. Okay. So, like, you can use a post as a staging area for an assault. Taking control of posts will allow you to fight with greater numbers than on roads. And since fortifying makes them even stronger, give those a try, too. Hmm. A good strategy against many units on the same post is a pincer attack. By attacking an enemy unit from multiple sides, you can gain advantage in combat. When you can't control a post, employing a pincer attack may give you the extra punch you need. Okay, so... They have smaller numbers, but they're they're doing a pincer attack. Of course, these guys have got this going on too, so they're they're trying to pincer this. You know, I'm thinking that the blue uh, is not doing too well here. Although they look does look like they have some high ground here. I'm not sure if the high ground uh, gives any benefit. It hasn't really talked about that, but if it's judging by what I've seen of the game so far, it wouldn't surprise me if high ground did give a benefit, especially to range. Well, only to range combat. I mean, it's not like melee can really get much of a benefit from high ground I means they're not going to throw their swords or something but it would be good for de a defensive position sure fighting uphill is never good okay winning battle mode that's the last one hallelujah skillfully directing your units and making good use of tactics is the key to winning battles here are some suggestions multiple unit pincer attacks Units automatically attack enemies in front of them, but can't attack enemies to the side or behind them, excluding melee attacks. Yes, attacking a single unit with multiple units gives you the advantage, which we saw that in the tutorial, even though I did it very poorly. Use tactics. Using tactics can allow you to strengthen your own units and weaken enemy units. Try using the tactic the situation calls for and making the best of your abilities. What is it, the seven elites? Jesus, what kind of tactic is that? It says raises attack and speed for a long period. This is, I can't even read this. Tokushima. Whew, can't even read it. Doesn't matter. Confuse the enemy. Yeah, this one sounds good. Units with horses can charge, and units with muskets can release, both of which can confuse enemy units. Well, we don't have any muskets, but we do have horses. A confused unit temporarily loses its ability to attack. Ah, use facilities. Outposts and bases have defensive facilities such as turrets and horse stockades. Turrets will automatically attack enemies in range. Horse stockades lower enemy speed. Ah, try using the, these facilities as much as you can when fighting defensive battles. All right. The thing I'm wondering about here with like charging, like say if I have uh, one unit that I'm going to charge with and then I have like an archer unit or two archer units sit sitting back and I want to like confuse the enemy and then plank them with arrows like is there friendly fire it would make sense if there was i don't know so well that is all in terms of military wow that was i feel like that was pretty exhaustive but i maybe it's not i don't know so well we're definitely going to be taking it to the nagashima during our active phase i wonder do we have to like declare war on them or something just here's our it's our military so we can set our plan in march we could request relief forces but i don't think that's going to be necessary at all so what's our what's our what's our game here what are we going to do well we have forces that are going to come out of here and here and we got fo a force that's going to come out of here hmm I'm trying to think of what the best what the best way to do this is. So this is fortified by the Kyosu Oda clan, these guys. This is not fortified. Is that a ferry? Trade port. Ooh, they have a trade port. Mmm, I want. I want. I want your trade port. So I'm thinking 
I wonder if it would be like we could have uh, our troops from here and here meet up here and these guys I don't know if I want to like march them here down through here it might be better since they're gonna be a smaller detachment to come along this way because uh, these guys are gonna go here to here I'm thinking bring them up to here and we we can work out of uh, Caney Caney or uh, alternatively we could bring these guys up to here and sit until they get to here because if they I can't imagine that they're gonna want to send any soldiers out to actually come at us but if we moved the, these guys immediately like over this direction they might like go be like we're just gonna go up here and take Shibata so I don't really want that to happen do I, I don't know, we'll see but that's gonna have to wait for the next video um, because I burned a freaking ton of time looking at all those help menus I apologize again profusely Whew. okay Thank you guys so much for joining me, and in our next video, we ride. Game on.